Oh boy, this is one of the more exciting data breaches that I think we've seen since the feds did a sweep on Breached and picked up our boy Pom Pom Perrin. Now, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick heads up here. If you've got any MSI hardware that's laying around, you better be very careful when you're updating its firmware. In fact, more importantly than that, if you've got MSI hardware, keep an eye out for an update coming from MSI officially to deprecate some of their no longer good private keys because those private keys that MSI uses to sign those firmware updates so that you know it's legit and actually coming from them, well, they've been published online, which means that that system of trust that so many operating systems and antivirus programs rely on to know what vendor a piece of software is actually coming from has been broken. And now hackers can publish Trojan horse malware that masquerades as a legit MSI driver update. And these validation systems that are supposed to protect you are gonna say that the software, that virus is actually signed by MSI. And of course, this problem is greatly magnified on operating systems like Windows, where most people are probably still downloading random software from the internet. They're doing it the old school way where you open up Google search, you type in the name of something you want to download, and then you get that exe from the first link that's available. But the problem with this approach is Google, Bing, all these different search engines, they put ads and sponsored content at the top of most of your search results. And these ads come from people, usually businesses, that are paying Google a whole bunch of money to rank their site first whenever people search in a particular word or phrase. And this is actually one of the most effective paid SEO, which is search engine optimization methods, that's available today. This can drive a whole lot of traffic to your site and make you a whole lot of money, especially if you're a hacker who can just clone a legitimate software website, make it look exactly the same, and then you can serve your malware from there. Because when most folks download an EXE, they're just throwing caution to the wind. They're not double checking to make sure they're on the right website. They're not even checking to see how large the file is or who it's signed by. They just go ahead and run it. And like I said, malware can now be signed by MSI or at least appear to be signed by MSI. So hopefully fewer people on Windows are going to resort to getting their software in this compromised way. I mean, after all, there is a package manager in the newer versions of Windows now. In fact, I think with Windows 11, it's turned on by default. And WinGet actually works pretty decently for at least a Microsoft package manager. And it also looks like there's a lot of MSI software that is available there. So getting it this way via WinGet or at least directly from MSI's website is what you're gonna want to do for your firmware updates moving forward. Now let's talk about how these private cryptographic keys got published in the first place. Just last month on April 7th, MSI published a statement about a security incident where they said, MSI recently suffered a cyber attack on part of its information systems. Upon detecting network anomalies, the information department promptly activated relevant defense mechanisms and carried out recovery measures and reported the incident to government law enforcement agencies and cybersecurity units. Currently, the affected systems have gradually resumed normal operations with no significant impact on financial businesses. MSI urges users to obtain firmware and BIOS updates only from its official website and not use files from sources other than the official website. MSI is committed to protecting the data security and privacy of consumers, employees, and partners, and will continue to strengthen its cybersecurity architecture and management to maintain business continuity and network security in the future. MSI is committed to protecting the data security and privacy of consumers, employees, and partners, and will continue to strengthen its cybersecurity architecture and management to maintain business continuity and network security in the future. And then we've got a link to 
all their different social medias here at the bottom, which takes up almost as much space as this very, very short statement. Obviously, this is a really boilerplate security incident statement that doesn't actually tell us anything about what actually happened. ChatGPT could probably have written up something better than this. And the problem with a really generic response like this from a consumer standpoint, even though I don't personally own any MSI products, is this was clearly a screw up from the company, okay? This part where they say that they were detecting network anomalies, that's basically just corporate speak for, oh, we realized that we had been hacked and probably a lot of data was also stolen from us. And there's no details coming from MSI about what data was accessed, what data was stolen. There isn't even a statement saying that no personal or customer account information was accessed. Usually, you see something like that at the very beginning of these security incident statements. Basically, hey guys, uh, before we go into details about how we screwed up with our security, just know that you don't have to change your password. You don't have to worry about your email getting spammed because we managed to keep that stuff secured, uh, but the rest of our stuff is now out there on the internet. So who knows what data from MSI was really released out there into the world, of course, we know that dozens of firmware signing keys were leaked, which appears to affect 57 different MSI products, uh, and what looks like four Intel boot guard keys, those have also been leaked from this hack, and that affects 116 different MSI products. Uh, but since MSI wants to be so quiet about this incident, we're gonna have to get the rest of the details about what happened from the hacker group that is claiming responsibility. And in this case, the group claiming responsibility is called Money Message. I guess they got that name from the messages that their ransomware tells you, where it's like, hey, you gotta give us money if you want access to your stuff back. Uh, so this is a ransomware group who also uses the double extortion technique against their victims, which is where hackers first steal sensitive data from a company before they start encrypting all of their systems and their backups. Basically, anything that's connected to the company's networks are going to get encrypted. And then what the hackers will do is threaten to publish the stolen data if the companies don't pay the ransom to unlock that software. Because these days with how cheap storage is and how many horror stories people or we've heard from people losing their data, you've got to think that most companies, especially multi-billion dollar tech companies like MicroStar International, are going to have very recent backups and they're going to be uh, very responsible about making those backups and they're probably going to also keep some of them in cold storage so that even if the hackers take over their entire network and their entire domain they still don't get access to the backups and so they can recover from these kinds of losses very quickly but those industry secrets or proprietary code in this case if that's stolen then the hackers can threaten to release it and maybe the company will end up paying a ransom to keep that stuff secret. But MSI didn't do this in that case. They had until May the 4th to pay, timer has expired, and so we have this post on the Hacker's Onion site about all of the data that they stole. So they say that they've got MSI source code, which could mean drivers, firmware, or code for any of their various helper apps. Uh, they've got the framework to develop the BIOS, which is very interesting. And of course, they have the private keys for firmware and Intel boot guard. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, the hackers have a link to another Onion site, which is basically just some kind of file server that's hosting all of this stolen source code, it looks like it's over half a terabyte of data just from these three things here. And that's without drilling down into this uh, source code folder and you know going through all the folders within folders within folders, because there's a lot of stuff in here that I was looking at earlier. Um, so the thing about this is I've got no idea if what I would call a decent archive of all of this data has been created yet. Because obviously right now, the data is available through Tor. I didn't see any other links to 
other archives on the hacker site. And if you're familiar with Tor at all, you know that downloading this much data through it is gonna take a very long time. And it might also create some bottlenecks in the greater Tor network. So if these hackers really wanted to get the data out there to punish MSI or for whatever reason, I think it would be best to create a torrent of it and maybe even seed that torrent through I2P so that it's still available on the dark web, but then it's gonna be available on a dark web that was built from the ground up with file sharing in mind. And the reason that I think these files getting out could be a good thing is because that BIOS framework for so many MSI products is essentially open source now, or I guess source available would be the more accurate way to talk about it. Which means that now people could technically develop custom BIOSes for these more modern computers like what we have with Core Boot for older ThinkPads. Not to be confused with LibreBoot because the Intel management engine would still be in place. So you can't LibreBoot these machines, but in theory you could install something like Core Boot to them. And the only real obstacle that I can see here, I guess, is a legal one because it is technically illegal to use leaked code in order to make custom firmware, but it's only really illegal if you get caught. And plenty of people have done that kind of stuff in the past with gaming console firmware. Uh, and I think the same applies to phones. Like when people find leaks in, uh, I think Samsung's source code is one example where people found leaks in Knox or one of their security modules that allowed them to figure out how to root or how to install custom ROMs to those phones. So again, that's another area where this is pretty much alive and well. There's people out there running modified like Note 20s or you know maybe Note 22s, whichever one uh, was the latest one that was created from leaked software. It might not even be a, a Samsung phone, but you guys get what I mean. So I've got the feeling that there is someone out there who has the balls and the brains to create custom firmware, custom BIOSes for these MSI machines. And in addition to creating new firmware from this leak, people might actually be able to go in and patch MSI's existing buggy software because I've heard that it's not good and I've actually run into some firmware issues in MSI laptops back when I was working at Geek Squad. Uh, lots of people complaining about their helper apps just being really buggy. Like you go and change the fan settings and nothing happens or you try to lower the fan speed and actually raises it. All kinds of silly stuff. So someone out there, perhaps an open source chat who doesn't mind fixing illegal <laughs> leaked software might be able to make those improvements. Again, only time is gonna tell. But that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave a like and comment on this video in order to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. And by the way, the onion links to the Hacker Man's website and the files, those are probably gonna be in the comments of this video when it gets posted to Odyssey because YouTube is racist against onion links. They don't allow them in their chat. They don't really seem to allow links to just about anything in the comments section. I see a lot of people complaining about comments getting deleted because of that. So check out Odyssey. It's a much better platform for these kinds of videos anyway. Follow me there and have a great rest of your day.